All right. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon. I, I wish uh, very sincerely that we were mediating right now. Uh, our differences with the governor, but unfortunately, uh, the governor has cut off uh, mediation, and uh, you know, frankly, was not happy uh, and decided that he was going to walk out. So it's not the first time that he's done that on us, and. Uh, my guess is this probably won't be the last, but uh, that's part of dealing with people that you don't always agree with. And sometimes we have to agree with uh, or work with people that uh, we don't always agree with uh, the way that they deal with other people as well. And, and uh, unfortunately, that's the situation we're in. So, uh, you know, the mediation uh, we thought was, uh, you know, difficult. Obviously, the issues that we're dealing with are difficult. Um, the reason that we were in mediation was very simple. The governor line item vetoed the funding for the legislature. Uh, that basically is seen by us as an attempt to eliminate the legislature. Um, very plain and simply, I don't know that you can even interpret it any other way. Uh, we took him to court to restore the funding for our staff and our members um, to make sure that people had a voice here at the Capitol in the legislature. Uh, the lower court ruled, uh, favor ruled favorably uh, with us, uh, decided that uh, the legislature should be funded. They overturned the governor's line item veto, and the governor decided uh, to uh, appeal that to the Supreme Court. The court then ordered us into mediation. Uh, so it was the governor's action uh, that got us here, um, and unfortunately, uh, the governor is the one who has cut this off. So we're disappointed in, in his action. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, he's decided to end it, but that's his decision. Um, we will certainly uh, continue to talk with him at any time uh, and in any place to resolve these issues that we know are important to Minnesotans. Um, as far as the, the legislative funding, uh, I think we will continue, you know, we consider ourselves to be in survival mode. Uh, the governor has literally eliminated our funding. Um, the court has given us funding through October 1st. Uh, we do have some reserves that we can use beyond that. Uh, we will look at any other option uh, to make sure that people have a voice here at the Capitol in their elected representatives. We feel very strongly about upholding uh, Minnesotans' constitutional right to three branches of government. Uh, so we will look at any and all means necessary uh, to continue to have a functioning legislature here uh, at the state capitol, despite the governor's efforts to prevent that, what seems like today at all costs. And, and his anger uh, today really seemed to be, it was disappointing, uh, and I know uh, we all get frustrated once in a while, but today was the governor's day to get frustrated, I guess. Uh, but it seemed today like he was frustrated um, that he didn't successfully completely eliminate the legislature. Um, and I find that to be uh, very troubling and, and very disappointing. So uh, I'll let Senator Gazelka uh, make a few comments and then uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, I listened to the governor's uh, speech before us here and uh, his first comment was about uh, getting the waiver approved and I think that was a big deal. And I bring that up to say that was the beginning of session where we were actually working together uh, and that's why we wanted to do mediation. Uh, in the end, if the courts weren't going to uh, completely rule in our favor uh, and instead ask us to mediation, that was the opportunity to again set us on a, a path of working together. And so that's what we set out to do. Uh, we offered a number of offers, a number of things that we tried to work through, but they really were fo focused on how do we move forward from here. Uh, some of the things that the governor wanted to ne negotiate, we'd already negotiated. We all had agreed to, we'd all signed, and uh, we went back on our notes and we found that the governor absolutely said he would support the tax bill as is on Saturday evening before the end. And so it would have been a shock to us if had, had he not signed that bill. And so that's where we're, at, we're on that. But I also wanted to mention that uh, both mediation and, and both why we sued in the first place was the, the governor can't defund the House and Senate. That's the issue. It's, the issue is not how far we can run. We have a two-year budget that, that, fund, that we have to have funding all the way till 2019, July of 19. So that's the issue for us, is you can't defund the House and Senate, just like you cannot defund the judicial branch. And in the first uh, court uh, case uh, before Guthman, uh, Guthman, the Judge Guthman asked his attorney, well, could you then defund the courts? And the answer was yes. And we just flat out disagree with that. And so uh, we, we moving forward, you know, we will, we will continue. We, we hoped we would continue negotiation, but that did end abruptly uh, because that would be the way that we move forward. There's too many big issues that we have to work on. We can't, if you allow the, the legislative branch to be crippled, we cannot function the way that we want to function and need to function. 
We don't know yet what's going to go on with the HHS, the federal, what they're going to do with us. We don't know, but we know that we need to be fully functioning. So today's a big disappointment for me. Uh, I was very optimistic that we could find a way through, uh, but when it ended, it, it appeared that it didn't. And so now our hope is that the courts will rule as soon as possible. We hope they rule in our favor that you cannot defund the House and Senate. It seems to me that what set the governor off was the fact that one of you, somebody uh, told him you can keep operating up until the session in late February of, of 2018, and so he essentially has no leverage. Well, I, I, think, I think that's probably accurate, I, you know, and I, I, I certainly ask them, I mean, are you surprised that we weren't going to look for every option to make sure that people still had a voice here at the Capitol? Um, and, and I think the bottom line is that's what made the governor mad today, that he hadn't successfully eliminated us. Um, and, and frankly, that's not what, what Minnesotans expect this place to operate like. They expect you to roll up your sleeves and work with people even when you disagree, uh, to try to get to the bottom and, and solutions that, that Minnesotans really uh, can wrap their arms around. And sometimes compromise is difficult. And, and compromise is particularly difficult for this governor. Um, but we're committed to continuing to work towards compromise that we think uh, is in the best interest of Minnesotans, and we will do that. Um, as far as the, the funding uh, for the LCC, the governor has known about that money. In fact, he said publicly uh, early on in this process that he hadn't completely eliminated the legislature because there, wills, there was still some funding for the legislature. And what he meant by that was that he hadn't line item vetoed the LCC money. Um, that LCC money is one option on the table for us, but it does not come without a cost. Uh, that money was appropriated to pay uh, the joint staff between the House and the Senate. And if we take that money uh, from the second year of the biennium and use it to fund the House and the Senate for the first year, uh, it now brings a, a level of uncertainty for those employees employed by the LCC into the mess with the rest of us. Um, and, and if we can't find a solution to this, if the court doesn't rule, rule in our favor and we can't find a solution, potentially it means hundreds of more people now getting laid off uh, because they don't have the funding. But uh, we very strongly believe that we need to take uh, every, uh, you know, t take advantage of, of every resource we have available to us to make sure that Minnesotans do have their voice here at the Capitol. Yeah, I, I, I want to answer a little more of that too because the, the House and Senate have different carry for, forward numbers as far as what we have available. Uh, in June was the first time that we worked with MMB, the governor's branch, about what kind of dollars that the Senate had. And at that time, we showed that we had around $4 million available of carry forward. That, starting July 1, would not have ever gotten us to next session. Uh, again, the numbers change. Uh, the fiscal year is July 1. Uh, MMB worked with us just within the last few weeks. Uh, together with our staff, and the number was about six million. So there was no deception there from uh, MMB or from us. We were just taking the numbers that we had to come to a conclusion. Uh, take that and move us to October 1 instead of July 1, and we can get farther down the road with extreme measure. Uh, but saying that, it still does not fund us to the end of our budget cycle into the following year. So no matter what, no matter how you cut it, we don't have the resources and we are defunded. Talk a little bit more about the extreme measures we might expect, and if you're using every means available, how come your attorneys said last week or the week before that the court shouldn't fund you, even though you asked them to fund you back in That July? was simply a response to, do we believe the court can appropriate money? And we do not. We believe that's the legislature's job to appropriate the money. The governor himself cannot appropriate money. That's what he needs us for. That's why I'm so confused as to why he wants to eliminate us. He can't run the state of Minnesota without us. We're necessary. Um, and, and we just think it's a lot easier if he'd roll up his sleeves and work with us. Yes, we're going to disagree from time to time, but gosh, this isn't that difficult. Um, you know, I want to say, too, there's been some discussion about the, the five items and, and whether or not the governor had agreed to those in the tax bill. Uh, I think he's been very careful uh, about his response to that, but there's no question that the governor agreed to every one of those. Um, and, and I will say th the governor, through the negotiations, seems obsessed with tax increases. Um, it was the only option that he would throw on the table was a permanent tax increase that could be triggered by the executive branch uh, if there was even one dollar uh, deficit in the November forecast. Um, and, and permanent tax increases, uh, ongoing uh, permanent tax increases. So, um, you know, I, I want to remind people that if we do get into a deficit situation, it will not be because we did a small amount of tax relief this session. The tax revenue from last biennium to this biennium, even with 
the tax reductions that we made was still an increase of $2.571 billion. From this biennium to the next biennium, it will still be projected to be $3.265 billion. That's even after our tax reductions. Um, the governor needs to understand that the taxes aren't the problem here. It's the level of spending at the state of Minnesota. Um, and this governor doesn't seem to want to admit uh, that spending beyond the inflation of a family's budget and, and beyond our ability uh, and, and, and current tax revenues uh, is, is what's causing the problems in the state of Minnesota. Um, we're going to continue this conversation, uh, I'm sure, when we get the November forecast. Uh, but as far as the governor um, not agreeing to the tax bill, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to do it because I think it's important that everybody is held accountable and, and held to their word here at the Capitol. Uh, this is a text message uh, that was sent, and I'm going to give you the exact date and time, on Wednesday, May 24th at 6 29 p.m. This is a text message from the governor's chief of staff to my chief of staff and to the senator's chief of staff. Um, and it's a conversation about what bills had been approved and signed off on and were ready to send to the floor to be passed. Um, and this is her direct quote of the text message. This is Jamie Tincher saying this. These are the ones that are done, period. No changes, not even technical corrections. Ag, public safety, E12, higher ed, and taxes. The governor absolutely agreed to every provision that was in the tax bill personally himself and his staff signed off that the bill was ready to be passed. Um, I understand that he may have had uh, some disagreement or second thoughts after uh, some level of remorse. Uh, but if there's one thing that needs to be good around the Capitol, it's your word. Um, and the governor agreed to these things, which, which actually I hesitate to even tell you all of this because it's irrelevant. After he agreed and after we passed them, our governor signed these bills into law, and now he wants to change his mind. Um, I'm sorry, you don't get to do that. And, and we will have another session that starts next February 20th, and we can take up all these issues again. Uh, but you gave your word, you signed the bills, they became law. Minnesotans are expecting that. If, if this tax bill got vetoed, it means that, that cities would not have gotten their LGA increases. It means that that silver shovel that the governor was putting into the ground up at Digikey and Thief River Falls last week would not have happened. And I know that the governor intended to veto that tax bill because he has said it. But he has no problem going to Thief River Falls and putting that shovel in the ground and taking credit for that. You can't have it both ways. The governor agreed to all of this. It was good policy. He signed it. It's done. Um, in hindsight, what he has done is absolutely unconstitutional. We maintain that position. Uh, we're going to ask the court and continue to ask the court to provide the legislative funding, which we know is right. Uh, if they do not do that, we will look at other means. But everything's going to be on the table. Uh, and we feel like we owe that to the voters that sent us here. Provide the legislative funding by sticking with the Ramsey County decision or provide it by asking the court to fund sticking, you as you did a few months ago? Just, just upholding the, uh, the lower court's decision. And on the extreme measures? I, you thought I forgot? No, I, <laughs> I never thought you forgot. Uh, extreme measures, what I'll say is uh, right away uh, we had a, a mostly travel ban uh, for all the senators. Uh, we put a hiring freeze out so we weren't replacing anybody. So we were already limiting the staff that we had. But going forward, we need to make sure that we get well into the, the February, uh, February 20th and beyond because you don't just pass a bill. It takes a while to get there. If the governor vetoes it, we actually have to have bipartisan support. We have 34 Republican senators. We have to v override a veto with 45 votes. So I don't just assume that that's going to happen in this case. And so, so we're going to look at everything. You know, we have to look at our staff. We look, have to look at all of our uh, payments on everything that we do to make sure that we get beyond that time. But we, no matter what, we don't have money to get all the way into the following July. Have you talked to Democratic leadership about an override of the governor in February, and how likely is that to happen? Uh, you know, I have had initial conversations uh, with them about that. I, I, I won't give, you can ask them uh, directly, I guess, if, if you'd like to know what their opinion is on an override. I actually don't think we get there. Um, I, I think it's pretty obvious that the first bill out of the chute, the next legislative session, will be a, a bill funding the legislature. Um, my guess is the governor's going to sign that. Um, now. I've been wrong because I've predicted many times now that the governor was going to realize he had a losing hand and just kind of lay down and say, you know, enough, enough's enough. I lost this battle. Let's move on. Um, but 
you know, when I think about why people get frustrated with why St. Paul doesn't work or why, why Washington, D.C. doesn't work, um, this was an incredibly productive session. I think the most productive session in 20 or 30 years. Um, we got so much done. Uh, from tax relief to roads and bridges to real I mean there's just so many things Sunday liquor sales we got so much accomplished um, and all of that's getting lost in this little squabble over the governor having some small amount of remorse um, and and in all of that he's citing that he believes the the future fiscal state of the state's going to be in trouble because we did a, a, a small amount of tax relief. When I've already showed you uh, that the projected numbers of, of, of revenue from this biennium to the next, even including that tax reduction, are still uh, an increase of $3.265 billion. By the way, that number doesn't include any carry forward from the previous biennium, so the spendable amount of money is actually far greater than that. Um, for some reason, he wants to hold up immediately things that aren't going to be a problem for you know, four or six years from now, if ever. And I don't see that they ever will be. Um, the, the problem is the governor wants to probably continue spending at a rate beyond a 10% uh, per budget uh, clip. Uh, that's not sustainable. That's what's going to put us in a deficit situation. And, and I can only uh, glean from, from his actions that, that that's what he's up to. Um, but the, the spending is very clearly the problem. The legislature is in survival mode for funding. Um, why are there so many committee meetings going on in the last few weeks? Well, we haven't been in survival mode until right now. Um, you know, the, the legislature has a duty to, to be responsive to the electorate. Uh, we have committee hearings. We're not going to stop working because we're in survival mode. Uh, we're going to continue doing the work that Minnesotans sent us here to do, and that is having open and transparent committee meetings. You know, the governor keeps wanting us to go behind closed doors to work out some sort of deal using some unconstitutional leverage. Uh, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. We want to conduct the, the business of Minnesotans in open, transparent public hearings. Um, and we're going to continue doing that, even, even over the interim. Now, we're, we're going to put some things in place uh, to, to slow down the level of spend at the legislature to preserve our dollars as long as we can. Um, because our, our priority is going to be on our, our staff and our members and on the operation and function of making sure that Minnesotans have that voice in the legislature here at the Capitol. That's the core function of the legislature, and that's what we're going to focus uh, our efforts on. Yeah to what you're going to I mean, to it be could, doing. It, it'll be things, I think we actually put out a memo out of the House uh, some months ago and then we retracted it after the lower court's decision. Okay. Look to that memo. Those will be the things that go back into place. It'll be less per diems, it'll be less uh, travel, you know, uh, travel restrictions, those sorts of things. Um, we're going to go down to the core stuff. But there is, I mean, I want everybody to, to, to understand there is a realistic possibility that this could include furloughs and layoffs. Um, that is, we do not have enough money, even with the LCC money to operate the legislature for two years. Um, so, you know, I, I know that the governor is just angry today because he didn't successfully eliminate the legislature thus far. Uh, but, but frankly, um, we disagree with him so strongly and we're going to fight to make sure that people have their voice here at the Capitol. So um, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that, that continues to happen. I want to answer uh, the question about committees because, uh, for example, Min Lars is a total mess. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, we had committees to hear about that. Uh, capital safety is something where they hadn't, they're supposed to meet twice a year and uh, things have changed. Many, many, many capitals have much more security than us. Uh, we had one on terrorism because we want to know what's going on. To, to suddenly say we're not going to have any committee hearings or we're gonna, not going to have any uh, tours to see what's going on out, out throughout Minnesota is a mistake. That's where legislation comes from and so it's, it's very important to do. Bonding tours, Senjum announced. So, so some so, committees have. Yeah, Senator Senjum said until we get this resolved, we're not going to do bonding tours. Uh, that was yeah, that's his call. He's the chair. Uh, I, I, we want to get through this. We hope the courts uh, make a decision soon. Uh, but that is a fact, an area that would it, that is impacted. And when does that start? Because bonding tours have already been going on. Uh, in, on the Senate side, uh, that decision was within just the last couple weeks. Several have already happened, so those expenses, yeah. we were there. Yeah. Yep, glad you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? What, what kind of proposals did you make in these mediation sessions that, you know, obviously didn't touch on these five items that the governor raised? You know, we actually talked about the, some of the five items. Obviously, we didn't like that, but we wanted to, to show that we were open to at least talking and, and try to show some progress. And, and frankly, 
uh, my impression, and I let the senator talk too, was that, that there was much more uh, give and take on our side, and, and the other side just seemed really intent on uh, wanting a tax increase, a permanent tax increase, in fact, a, an inflator reinstated that would just keep, continue to increase uh, over time, um, regardless of whether we needed it or not. I mean, it was just kind of a, uh, you know, it seemed like an obsession about having to make sure that we had more tax revenue coming in. and, and um, you know, the, the, the data to me doesn't show that there's a problem. Um, and, and for me, I, I really tried to structure my thought uh, in the mediation with what is the problem right now and what's the problem we're trying to solve. Obviously, the, the number one problem was uh, that the governor lied out and vetoed the legislature and we don't have funding. Uh, but beyond that, there's been some constitutional questions. If he is worried about the fiscal uh, shape of the state of Minnesota, um, we only need to worry about that until February 19th because on February 20th, uh, the, all of the, uh, 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 you know, the, the wisdom that's uh, that's contained in our state constitution has decided that we're going to have a, a regular session of the legislature, uh, and we're going to deal with that the same way that we deal with uh, those situations for 150 years. Um, we're going to deal with it in legislative session. So we didn't need to deal with anything beyond February 20th. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to do that. The great part about that is we will have two more forecasts to, to, to have more information and be more informed when we're making those decisions. And we can do it during the legislative process when it's open and transparent. Uh, but the governor obviously wanted to get you know, some sort of tax increase reinstated immediately. Um, and, and I don't exactly know why, because the data that I have doesn't show that we need it. Yeah, uh, a couple things that we tried to uh, work on. The first one was, okay, if fiscal uh, stability is important to the governor, is there a way that we can find uh, to solve that uh, moving forward? But every time we looked at it, uh, we were reminded that right now we have a system in place. If we're short, our reserves come in and kick in the difference. And we have $1.6 billion of reserves that are there in case we have a shortfall. But we were trying to explore a number of uh, avenues along that line. Uh, in the end, that kind of broke up. Uh, the other thing that we looked at is, can we agree on some things moving forward? Can we look to Minnesota's future together for the things that we have to do and, and find that as the way to win? And, and uh, we didn't get any traction there. Uh, we never did get to uh, another area that I think we would have explored, and that is, is there a way to, to make sure that there's not shutdowns in the future? And we may explore that during session, uh, how do we stop that? But in the end, we, we just couldn't get to any place. I didn't feel like we really got much back uh, from the executive branch, uh, but uh, they really wanted those five uh, issues, and, and we felt like those had been negotiated uh, in good faith and agreed to uh, during the regular and special session experience or did it feel like you were back in the legislative? You know the movie Groundhog Day? Um, no, it, it was, uh, I haven't been through a mediation uh, ever and our attorneys uh, uh, and uh, the mediator basically said they've never really experienced a something like this. But it is important that we get it right. Uh, in, in the end of the day we have to have the three branches of government all having the authority that they were given. And so that was my main thing to our attorney and that I would say to the mediator, I said, in the end, I want to make sure that the legislative branch has all the power they are meant to have, and that's worth fighting for. I think that's important for Minnesota, and it really isn't just this governor and this legislative branch and this judicial uh, court. It's five years from now, 10, 20, 50 years from now, it's important that we get it right. And so I'm optimistic in that regard that we will get it right. Other questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you.